الحمد للہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی سید الاولین والآخرین و علیہ طیبین الطاہرین و صحبہ الاکرمین اجمعین اما بعد قال اللہ تبارک و تعالی فی القرآن المجید والفرقان الحمید فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم و ما کان اللہ لیعذبہم و انت فیہم و ما کان اللہ معذبہم و ہم یستغفرون صدق اللہ مولانا العظیم و بلغنا رسوله الامین الكریم و نحن و لذالک لمن الشاہدین و الشاکرین و الحمدللہ رب العالمین Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhum. Today we shall be discussing a very important in the present scenario of the global pandemic called COVID-19, the coronavirus. The world has never seen a calamity or a disaster or a pandemic of this strength. Have we ever seen that? No, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we have never witnessed a calamity of this strength. A pandemic which has engulfed the entire world. A pandemic of this strength was never witnessed before. You take, for instance, the black flu or the Spanish flu, which has killed millions of people in Europe and elsewhere in the world. It was limited to certain boundaries to the geographical barriers. A certain country or certain uh, area was afflicted uh, with a torment with azab -e ilahi But at this moment of time, if you look into the COVID-19 and its spread, it has not just spread it in just one country alone. It has not contained in a country alone. This is a global problem at the moment. Have we ever thought of the Islamic perspective of the torments or the famine or the calamities or the drought or uh, or those things uh, for that matter no my dear brothers and sisters in islam we shall always be thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has blessed us and has made us the chosen ummah of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam there have been many instances in human history where of uh, uh, famine or calamities or disasters have struck now i have just recited uh, an ayatul mubarakah uh, from suratul anfal the verse number is 33 uh, just uh, hear out the translation of this beautiful ayatul mubarakah and this is very important for us as ahlus sunnah to understand the prominence and significance of our beloved prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Anfal uh, in verse number 33 has said, and in truth the matter is that it is not Allah's glory to torment them whilst you, O Muhammad, O venerable beloved, are also present amongst them. Nor would Allah torment them whilst they are engaged in supplicating him for forgiveness. Now you have just uh, heard uh, this uh, beautiful ayat al-mubarakah from Surah al-Anfal. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned and commanded that Allah will not torment the ummah of his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as long as the Prophet is present amongst them. Alhamdulillah, we as Ahl Sunnah, the true Muslims, do believe that our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama is present amongst us. That is the simple translation of the kalmay shahada that we utter la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah the kalmay tayyibah which is also known as that there is no god except allah as muhammad is his messenger we never say muhammad was his messenger jovi none of the fractions of the islam ever say that muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was the messenger of allah now this is 
the aqidah, this is the truth, that we all say Muhammad is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That signifies that our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, even after departing this world, even when he is not visible to our uh, eyes, he is still present among us and that is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Al-Anfal that Allah will not torment them O my beloved as long as you are present amongst them and Allah has also made a, uh, a condition here and also left a condition here that Allah will not uh, torment them whilst they are engaged in supplicating him for forgiveness so there are actually two conditions one is that Allah is not tormenting us. Now, as uh, you look into the uh, pandemic of COVID-19 or coronavirus, which is uh, popularly known as, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not definitely afflict all of the ummah of his beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa with COVID-19 or coronavirus. That means that the Muslim fraternity or the community uh, as a whole will not be wiped off from the face of the earth because the reason is Allah's Messenger, the beloved Prophet, is present amongst us. And with his sadqa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given us an opportunity to survive as an ummah, as a qairul ummah, as the akhri ummah, as the last community of the believers in this world. So the other condition which has been laid down here by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah is again saying, nor would Allah torment them whilst they are engaged in supplementing him for forgiveness. So as long as we are all doing istighfar and asking for forgiveness from Allah the most merciful, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as collectively will not put us in azab and will not try us, uh, you know, as a whole of the ummah. So they will not be destroyed. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, before coming back to the topic, it is is very important for us to know that why such fatalities do occur in this world why do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send down his wrath in the face of famine in the face of calamities in the face of uh, natural disasters or uh, uh, for that matter uh, in pandemics or epidemics that engulfs the world and millions of people die uh, and you know it is really really very important for us to understand all these things with the Islamic perspective. And it is very important for us to look back into the history that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put azab on the people. So we really need to seek guidance from the Holy Quran and the Sunnah about these matters and that is really very important. When we read the Holy Quran in Hadith al-Mubarakah, we can conclude it into three points as to why this is happening in the world, why this COVID-19, why this coronavirus. So the, there are a few points here which I would like to discuss with you, my bro dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that natural disasters are punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, there is no doubt about it. It has been proven uh, in the light of Quran al-Majid. There are so many uh, verses of Quran al-Majid that are shahid, that witness to this fact that natural disasters are punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those people who are either disbelievers or cross his limits. That means natural disasters occur only on those people that the, those who are disbelievers and they they're disbelieving uh, reaches to that extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not happy with them and is angry upon them and he sends uh, down uh, natural disasters as a means of torment or cross Islamists there are people who cross Islamists there are some limitations for the believers that they shouldn't be crossing those limitations and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden his believers to cross those limits so, so the punishment or the natural disasters or the pandemics occur when we as a believer cross his limits and we should be knowing uh, what exactly the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us are even though he is limitless. Uh, natural disasters are also warning for the sinners. Have you ever thought this that the people who are engaged in committing sin after sin, sin after sin. So this is a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they should stop 
stop committing sins anymore and they should stop this obedience at once uh, so this is uh, like a warning sign for us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the third point is natural disasters are test for the believers we have already discussed this in afflictions and trials on Muslims in the previous topic so I wouldn't be going to that point now elaboration of all these points in the light of Holy Quran and Hadith to know all this is very important for us uh, as I have told you that national and uh, natural disasters are punishment of Allah for those people who are either disbelievers or cross his limits and you know uh, like we should look back into the history of Anbiya Ikram when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent his torments upon them. So let's uh, start with this beautiful ayat al mubarakah uh, which is coming from uh, Surah al shura and the point here goes like this that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tormented the people or those who have transgressed his limits and those who have disobeyed him. So there are many 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 uh, instances here that we really need to go through that to understand from uh, uh, from and in the light of Quran al-Majid to understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sends down uh, uh, calamities or natural disasters or uh, these type of pandemics or uh, COVID-19 and all that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, uh, Surah al-Shura has said that this is uh, verse number uh, 30. Uh, the ayat al-Mubarakah is وَمَا أَسَابُكُمْ مِن مُسِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَعَافُ أَنْ كَسِيرٍ whatever misfortune befalls you comes upon you as a result of that evil work which your own hands have done whilst he forgives most of your doings so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding in surah the shura and it has, it has made it very clear that it is because of your own hands that misfortunes befalls upon you because this is a result of the evil work which you have done to please the satan you haven't uh, tried to please the rahman but some of us have um, intentionally or inten unintentionally have tried to please Satan by doing the evil work uh, with our own hands obviously and that is the reason that uh, while uh, have done while he forgives most of your misdoings and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives it but the uh, forgives them who uh, repents of their sins not forgives them who doesn't uh, repent of uh, whatever the sins they have committed and uh, when we look in back into the history my dear brothers and sisters in Islam if you look into the facts that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested people uh, and fear the fitna affliction and trial he said which affects not in particular only those of you who do wrong but it may also afflict all the good and the bad people and know that Allah is severe in punishment this ayat al-mubarakah is coming from uh, surah al-anfar the most of us think that we are believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we follow his deen uh, we offer salah we offer zakah we go perform hajj and we do all the things which uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to do and we are obeying most of us do that alhamdulillah summa alhamdulillah but some of us may also think and there are people who, uh, who have discussed uh, these things with me and some of them has raised this point that why are we suffering for the punishment of those people why are we suffering from the mistakes of or don't people this is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eternal message and it, it cannot be changed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in surah al-anfal وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُسِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ زَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ قَاسَ وَآلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ so my dear brothers and sisters this is uh, uh, verse number 25 and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Quran al-Majid and fear the plague which will not afflict exclusively those who are the tyrants amongst you but it is its victims will also include those who are accomplices in tyranny or who remain indifferent to it and bear in mind that Allah is severe in inflicting torment so now if you concentrate 
on the words of this ayatul mubarakah uh, verse number 25 from surah al-alfal alfal allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said and fear the plague which will not afflict exclusively those who are the tyrants amongst you so you should be fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the when the torment comes when the azab comes when the affliction is sent when the torment is sent it is not only the people uh, who live in the vicinity of that area or for the country for that matter they are if, uh, be getting afflicted but also those who remain indifferent and the accomplices of the tyranny uh, so that means that those who are indifferent to the, uh, the to the teachings of Islam to the teachings of Quran to the orders and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is saying not as a whole but as in part they will also be included in that calamity so my dear brothers and sisters in Islam most of the Muslims these days are indifferent to the message of Allah and his beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam so isn't it the reason that we are also being tested or we are also being partly tormented for having crossed our limits so this is really an alarming situation for us as a Muslims to uh, retrospect into this matter and think about it that what have we done to get this so we are being indifferent like I have also uh, mentioned in the previous lectures that as a Muslim it is our duty to uh, you know keep people or refrain people from doing the evil that most of us uh, these days when we see uh, when we happen to witness one of our brother or sister in the religion is committing a mistake we just turn a blind eye on them and we don't look at them that is where we are going wrong and that is the reason uh, the COVID-19 or, or the coronavirus is afflicting uh, Muslims also and you have seen in the Middle East the situation is getting worse day by day thousands of people are getting afflicted to it let me talk about uh, the recent uh, uh uh, things which have occurred in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia which is a blessed land Hijaz al muqaddasah you have seen on social media and you have seen on television and you have read it uh, on the print and electronic media that uh, the bars were open there and the pubs were open there discotheques you have seen musical concerts being organized there so the people who have remained indifferent to it the clergyman the pious the religious people from Hijaz al muqaddasah or, or for that matter the believers from the Arab, the Middle East and the Hijaz al muqaddasa or Wustat al-Arab, they have remained indifferent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Anfal has said that وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا يُسِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ زَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ قَاسَّ وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْإِقَابِ And fear the plague which will not afflict exclusively those who are the tyrants amongst you. But its victims will also include those who are accomplices in tyranny or who remain indifferent to it and fear uh, uh, and keep uh, this in mind that Allah is severe in inflicting charming so isn't it one of the reasons that uh, uh, you know most of the Middle Eastern countries are in the grip of uh, uh, the coronavirus or the COVID-19 for that matter it is still time that we should realize our duties as a Muslim and you know uh, we should try to uh, stop or curb all these kinds of things which are un-Islamic and un uh, inhuman uh, so these are things which needs to be taken control by I would suggest by the Arabian countries and it is really very important uh, to look into that issue so dear brothers and sisters in Islam uh, I have just recited so a few ayahs for you uh, just to uh, you know uh, bring it to your knowledge that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gets really unhappy with with his believers and what what are the reasons that leads to all these kinds of azabs or uh, the sufferings and the sufferings have become global at this moment of time if you look back into the history uh, if you look into uh, deeply into the uh, qasais the stories from uh, Quran al-Majid the qasas al-Quran you will get to know that uh, we are not the only people who have have been tested or tried or you know uh, partly or uh, as a wholly tormented by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there have been large many instances that the, when the believers went astray and when they uh, insulted the uh, beloved uh, 
prophets or messenger of uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became really unhappy with them and sent down a vab on them uh, so the let's talk about uh, you know the previous uh, predecessors of our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam some of the anbiya and they were so pious so blessed with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they tried their best to send or the propagate or the preach the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the people remained indifferent to the teachings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so unhappy and angry on them that he sent down his wrath on them and he the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala killed most of them with his azab. So let's talk about uh, uh, some of the anbiya kiram uh, who have uh, uh, you know, propagated the message of Islam, uh, propagated the message of religion, and you know, uh, most of the people uh, they just overheard and uh, disobeyed uh, his uh, Ambiya or Rasul, the messengers of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Let's talk about the first instance after Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu was salam. It is the instance of the Sayyidina Nu alayhi salam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has uh, you know discussed the incident or the cyclone uh, which was sent down onto the people of no in detail in surah atul qamar uh, which is chapter number 54 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this uh, very clearly and has uh, spoken about it uh, in in a detailed manner uh, you you must uh, have also heard about the stories of sayyidina no uh, when the cyclone was said so let's uh, take a, a you know a quick look into what actually led uh, to all these uh, things and why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down his torment so I'm reading out the verses from Surah Al-Qamar. This is the so the verse number nine, in which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has said, "Auzu billahi min al-shaytanir rajim." كذبت قبلهم قوم نوح فكذبوا أبدنا وقالوا مجنون وأزدجر. The people of Nuh. No, which is also known as in English, the people of No also denied before this. So they belayed our servant No, the messenger, and said he is mad and he was uh, uh, given threats. So what actually the uh, Ummah or the community of No did was that they rejected uh, the message of Sayyidina Nu ala Nabiyana alayhi salatu was salam and said he is mad and he was given threats. So they threatened him that, you know, if you do not stop from preaching uh, the message of truth or the message of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would actually kill you. And that uh, this is uh, this is actually leading to the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَدَعَا رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ فَانْتَصِرُ So at this moment of time, Sayyidina Nuh ala Nabiyyana alayhi salam prayed. So he prayed to his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am powerless before the transgression of my people, so take raven. These are the words of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam that when his ummah transgressed his orders or his command, so at this moment of time, Sayyidina Nuh prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have translated, oh my uh, Lord, and I am helpless, I am powerless, so help me out. Then we open the gates of heaven with torrential rain. So this is a natural disaster which has been discussed in Quran al-Majid. Uh, Perhaps uh, for the first instance uh, in the law, in the history of humanity, a torment of this uh, this strength was never witnessed before. Uh, the cyclone which was created for the transgressors, which is also known as the cyclone of No Tufan and No. وَفَجَرْنَا الْأَرْضَ أَيُونًا فَأَلْتَقَ الْمَاءُ عَلَى أَمْرٍ قَدْ قُدِرْ And we burst springs from the earth. So the water of the earth and the heaven this is not about just water from the earth Allah is saying so the washer of the earth and the heaven collected for the same purpose that had been decreed already for their destruction so we are actually chopping uh, talking about a uh, destruction uh, in whole the entire community is going to get afflicted with this uh, and we carried him no uh, in the ark built with planks and nails so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and ordered no that he should make an ark the ark of no which is uh, uh, popularly known as that you should make all the living uh, things of the species those who are 
disobedient to know. Uh, keep this in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not allowed anybody who was disobedient to Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. This is, we are talking about those who were obedient and those who were uh, respecting uh, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only those were the lucky people who were allowed to enter into the ark which was made by Sayyidina Nuh. Uh, which floated before our eyes under our security. Allah, all this was done to exact revenge for him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done this just because that Allah was unhappy with the people of Nome that he sent a torment and azab in the face of this cyclone. Uh, the world has never witnessed a cyclone of this strength. And surely we made the ruins of the deluge subsist as a sign. So is there anyone who will think and take advice? So this, there is a moral in the story of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam for all of us that Allah made the reunions of the deluge subsist as a sign. So it was actually as a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wanted to make it clear to the people that you are powerless before the might and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the reason uh, uh, a cyclone of this uh, strength was uh, erupted. Uh, out of uh, Tanur, uh, which has been mentioned in uh, Tafasir. Uh, so how my torment and my warning were. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the people. This message in Quran al-Majid is not just for the people of No. This is an eternal message for all of us, for all the believers who believe in Allah, His messengers, His books, in His angels, and in the, in the day of resurrection. So this is it's not just about a story, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah is reminding us, us as believers, that if you transgress, if you cross the limits, this is how we have done with the people of No, those who have transgressed and disobeyed our messengers. We have done this to them. So Allah is now asking us as believers, so how my torment and my warning were? So Allah is asking us, have you not seen what I have done to the people of No? by erupting a cyclone. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it is very, very important for us to keep all these stories which can give us, you know, the courage uh, to face the calamities or, you know, the ways to ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is very important uh, for us as believers to know all these stories in the light of Quran al-Majid. And there is also an instance of tribe of Ad which has also been mentioned in Quran al-Majid. The people of Ad also practiced polytheism and rejected their messenger uh, Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam. They used to claim that they were the superpower. What beautiful words these are coming here, my dear brothers and sisters, from Surah Al-Fussilat. Uh, they, they used to think that they were the superpowers. Now you have seen that America or China or there are some nations who think that they are the superpowers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent has not sent a very big thing uh, to test them or you know has not sent a nuclear power or a very big torment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent just a little virus. A virus is the thing which is not visible with your naked eye. You need to have a microscope to look at that. So, my dear brothers and sisters, just imagine the might, the power of our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these superpowers and they claim that they are the superpowers of this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't send a fleet of aircrafts or you know something mighty uh, to uh, to torment them but Allah is all knowing, is all powerful that he has sent just a virus. So this is Allah Akbar the power of our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has sent a, a small virus of COVID-19 and the people are afflicted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for all these transgressions. So this is the story I was just talking about Hud alayhi salam. They used to claim that they were the superpowers and say, 
Who is mightier than us in strength? Aren't these the words of the global leaders at the moment? Just, uh, you know, close your eyes and just uh, think and imagine about the uh, bold and unruly statements of the global leaders at the moment. And these were their words. Who is mightier than us in the strength? See, they know that Allah who created them was mightier in strength than them. And they used to deny our eyes. Ayahs, proofs, evidences, verses, lessons, revelations, etc. This is coming from Surah al fusilat my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. I would just like to read out uh, the Ayat al mubarakah for you. Uh, uh, the verse of this Ayat al mubarakah are like this. This is Surah al fusilat The Ayat number is, the word number, verse number is 13. فَإِنْ أَعْرَزُوا فَخُلْ أَنْزَرْتُكُمْ سَائِقَةً مِثْلَ سَائِقَةِ آدٍ وَسَمُونَ Then if they turn away, say, I warn you of a terrible torment like the destruction of Ad and Samoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destroyed them. There are just the ruins of Qawmi Ad was somewhat left in this world. So this is what this is all about, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry and is really angry upon the people for transgressing uh, his orders, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends torments upon these people. So these were some of the instances which I have discussed with you in the light of, uh, you know, the Quran al-Majid. Or there is one more very beautiful story that we all are aware of. This is a story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun which is also known as Pharaoh. So he was he was a disobedient of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never, uh, you know, uttered the shahada until he was drawn. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, was so unhappy uh, with Pharaoh that he gave him so many chances that he should, uh, you know, believe in the message of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Moses for that matter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Qasas has also said about this. Uh, this is uh, verse number 40, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah has said, what he actually the torment was like for for Fir'aun who, who was so arrogant and proud just like the global leaders of America or China or, or Russia or the Euro for that matter and he thought like he was God and he declared that he was God right in front of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. There are so many beautiful stories uh, relating to the Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and none of the prophets except our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi after our beloved Sayyidina Musa was so much discussed in Quran al-Majid that none of the prophets were discussed in so much detail that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam will be discussing that inshallah some other fine day. So what Allah did to the Pharaoh that most of the people these days are thinking they are the pharaohs and they are the gods and they can do anything they like. You know, uh, we actually give examples that if we see somebody who's tyrant, uh, who is, uh, you know, is dominant and he thinks that he is the superpower of this world, we correlate him to Pharaoh and, you know, in the Indian terminology, we say that he thinks he is a Pharaoh or something like that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful powerful almighty but he says in surah al qasas verse number 40 from quran al majid fa aqaznahu wa junuduhu fa nabaznahum fil yam fanzur kayfa kana aqibatu al zalimin so we seized him and his forces in the torment and threw them into the sea observe then how terrible was the end of the tyrants so my dear brothers and sisters this was the end of the tyrants, those who transgressed uh, the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now coming back to us as an ummah of beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Now it might struck in our minds that why have we been tested or tried or why are we being involved in this torment? So I have already discussed that if we remain indifferent to the people who are transgressing the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or uh, doing things, uh, uh, the evil things which are forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we may also get inflected because once an infection or something like that happens, whoever is 
sitting beside them. This is the uh, uh, you know theory right now of the most of the uh, you know scientists uh, dealing with COVID-19 that if you are uh, you know in contact with any of the pe person who is afflicted or infected uh, with COVID-19, you should stay away from him. You should stay at least six meters. Some say eight meters, and you shouldn't be talking to him. So this is something not new to the religion of Islam. Allah's Messenger has also already uh, talked about this. Inshallah, we will be discussing that in an another topic. But at this moment of time, my topic is that that why Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sends down calamities. What are the reasons behind that? So we have discussed that in the light of Quran al majid that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displaced with the acts of uh, his uh, uh, people or the people of the earth so he sends down torments to destroy them and there are so many reasons for sending this these torments that as we have discussed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends natural disasters as punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those people who are either disbelievers or cross level the second was like natural disasters are warning for the sinners so just keep this in mind I'm just coming back to the topic just to uh, you know uh, keep you updated and you know uh, to give you uh, a, a real faith and uh, keep you prepared for all all these things and we shall also be discussing in another topic uh, that uh, what should be the remedies and uh, you know to get rid of the COVID-19 pandemic so as a second point which were discussed that natural disasters are warning for the sinners so just be warned of this and natural disasters are the test for the believers so we if we think we are the believers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already tested so many people let's talk about uh, an incident in the life of our beloved prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama so the polytheist of Makkah uh, brought a big army against prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and we're talking about the fifth year of the hijra uh, it's been five years since the uh, our beloved prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has uh, uh, migrated to madinat al munawwara uh, so i'm just talking about uh, an ayat from surah al ahzab which is also known as the confederates that uh, you know the mushrikin in the kuffar the Yahud, the Jews, and the Christians, they all made a confederation. These all disbelievers, transgressors, they all, uh, you know, made a commitment that, you know, it is not really easy to fight Muhammad and his people alone. So let's confederate and make a confederation and let's attack at once. So all the people from the surrounding area, the Meccans, uh, the surrounding areas of people living in the surrounding areas, the Yahud, the Nasara, uh, the Kuffar, they all made the confederation and try to attack our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped the believers in surah al-ahzab allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has discussed about the help which was sent down to his beloved prophet sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wa alihi wasallam and upon uh, his believe, uh, his companions allah's messenger has said this is uh, coming from surah al-ahzab words number 13 Allah has mentioned the story here. Ya ayyuhal ladheena aamunu skuru ni'matullahi alaykum. Is jaa'atakum junoodun fa arsalla alayhim reeham wa junoodun lam tarawha. Wa kana allahu bima ta'maluna basira. Sadaqallahu al-azim. O believers, recall Allah's favors to you when the forces of disbelievers came upon you. Then we sent wind and troops of angels against them whom you did not see in Allah says best what you do so dear brothers and sisters in Islam if you are a believer then the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely near you and it is coming to you Allah will definitely help you but to those help will come of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are believers who are true believers not just believers like they are believing in the morning and they are disbelieving and disobeying uh, in the night that doesn't mean at uh, this moment that Allah's help will come to you so my dear brothers and sisters in Islam it is very very important for us to understand that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not uh, make us you know uh, wipe out from the face of the earth 
This is because of the nisbat of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that we have. So dear brothers and sisters in Islam, these were some of the ayat which I have just recited right in front of you to just make you aware and to give you the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent different torments on different peoples in different times for their different disobediences. So these were some of the uh, chapters that we have discussed. Now coming back to the uh, topic, the, the first ayat al-mubarakah that I have recited in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ So this is really, really a blessing for all of us. So if you look into uh, the perspective of this ayat al-mubarakah, I'm just coming back to my topic and in truth the matter is that it is not Allah's glory to torment them whilst you O oh, venerable beloved are also present amongst them. So this is an ayat al-mubarakah that should, we should always keep our, in our minds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never uh, make us extinct uh, like he has done most of the predecessors of the previous community. They don't even exist today. There are so many examples that I can give. You know, none of them have existed. But we as a Muslims will exist until the day of resurrection, inshallah, until Sayyidina Imam al-Mahdi, Imam al-Muntazir alayhi salam comes and the victory will be in the hands of Muslims, inshallah. We will be the rulers of this world, just rulers of this world. Justice will flourish everywhere, inshallah. A topic on Sayyidina Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam is also in the pipeline. We should also be discussing that. But you know, let's talk about this beautiful hadith al-mubarakat which has been uh, narrated by Sayyidina Sawban radiallahu ta'ala anhum about the famine, uh, the drought, the pandemic or the charmers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down on earth for the disbelievers or for the transgressors. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is actually about the nisbat of our beloved sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama that we have wa ma kana allahu liyu'azzibahum wa anta fihim we will not torment you we will not make you extinct until my beloved rasul is present amongst you so this hadith al mubarakah as i have said is uh, narrated by hazrat sayyidina suban radiyallahu ta'ala anhum the beautiful hadith al mubarakah has been mentioned in muslim in tirmizi sharif in abu daud has also mentioned it and uh, imam tirmizi has said hada hadithun hasanun sahih uh, Imam al Hakim also said, Hada hadithun sahihun. This is a uh, uh, you know, fine, authentic tradition uh, by uh, narrated by Hakim, Imam Tarmidi, uh, Muslim, uh, and Abu, Abu Dawood, uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Uh, An Sa'bana, radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Khala, Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, in Allah zawal al arda, farayatu mashariqaha wa magaribaha. وَإِنَّ أُمَّتِي سَيَبْلُغُ مُلْكُهَا مَا زُوِيَ لِي مِنْهَا وَأُوْتِيْتُ الْكَنْزِينَ الْأَحْمَرَ وَالْأَبْيَضَ وَإِنِّي سَعَلْتُ رَبِّي لِأُمَّتِي أَنْ لَا يُحْلِكَهَا بِسَنَةٍ آمَّةٍ وَأَنْ لَا يُسَلَّتَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَدُوْبٌ مِنْ سَوِيَ أَنْفُثِهِمْ فَيَسْتَبِيهَا بِ فَيَسْتَبِيهَا بَيْزَتُهُمْ وَإِنَّ رَبِّ قَالَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ إِنِّي إِذَا قَضِيَتُ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَرُدُّ وَإِنِّي آتَيْتُكَ لِأُمَّتِكَ أَنْ لَا أَحْلِكِهِمْ بِسَنَةٍ آمَّةٍ وَأَنْ لَا أُصَلَّتَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَدُوبًا مِنْ سَوِيَ أَنْفُسِهِمْ يَسْتَبِيهُ بِبَيْزَتُهُمْ وَلَوْ أَشْتَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ مَنْ بِأَخْتَارِهَا وَأَوْقَالَ مَنْ بَيْنَ أَخْتَارِهَا حَتَّى يَكُونَ بَعْزُهُمْ يُحْلِكُهُ بَعْزًا وَبِسَبَبِ بَعْزُهُمْ بَعْزًا Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful hadith al-mubarakah we have just recited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us reward for hearing the beautiful words of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa sallam in the beautiful Arabic language, the language of Quran al-Majid. Let's hear the translation of this hadith al-mubarakah, keeping in mind that why are we as an ummah will not be, uh, you know, uh, suffering this torment as a whole. That means the whole of ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will not be afflicted 
are infected with the virus of COVID-19. Let's hear this beautiful verse. Allah's messenger said, Allah collected the earth together for me. Subhanallah. So I beheld both its eastern regions and its western regions. So in the domain of my ummah, my community, will surely reach that extent to which the earth has been collected together for me. I was granted both the red and the white treasures of the world. I begged my Lord not to destroy my ummah. These are the words. Listen out carefully. I begged my Lord not to destroy my ummah, my community, with a drought and famine, Allahu Akbar, and not to allow an enemy from other than themselves to seize their power or power over them by invading their territory and annihilate them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh Muhammad, once I have issued a decree, it will not be reversed for the sake of your ummah, for your community. O oh Muhammad, I have granted you the assurance that I will not destroy it with a universal door. These are the words of beautiful Hadith al mubarakah Allah has promised our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I will not destroy them with a universal door. So for that matter, universal door means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not destroy earth with a a universal famine or a universal uh, calamity or a universal disaster which is this thing we are talking about the coronavirus at the moment because this has turned into a universal drought a universal calamity a universal pandemic the pandemic of this strength was never witnessed in the history of humankind so allah has promised that i give you assurance that i will not destroy them with a universal drought and that i will not allow an enemy from other than themselves to seize power over them by invading their territory and annihilate them. That is a different topic, inshallah. We will also be discussing about it very soon about in, in the lecture which will be coming up soon, inshallah. Uh, and the topic uh, will be like the unity of Ummah, the importance of the unification of the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you have just heard about the beautiful Hadith al mubarakah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised his messenger that I will not... Uh, you know destroy or send torment upon your entire community so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama that uh, a universal drought will not make them extinct uh, uh, from the face of the earth so my dear brothers and sisters in islam these were some of the really really very important topics which i wanted to discuss with you and alhamdulillah we have discussed and we have heard about uh, all the ayat al mubarakah from quran al majid which we, which was discussed uh, in detail about the natural disasters or the calamities or the pandemics which were sent down by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who have transgressed his command. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala best to us with an opportunity to follow his commands, to follow the commands which has been laid down for us in his holy book, uh, Al-Quran Al-Majid, and the commands of his beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama. So these are really very tough times for us as a Muslims and you know we should uh, remain steadfast and we should be patient and we should be doing always be seeking forgiveness in the holy month of Ramadan and it is very very of utmost importance that we as a Muslim should realize our duties our duties uh, which will bring us near to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should also tr uh, ever try ever be trying uh, to follow the sunnah of his uh, beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam so in these times these these tough times, these terrible times, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the wasila of his beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put ease for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give shifa al-kamila, cure to those who have been afflicted or infected with the COVID-19 and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help the ummah of his beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam i as a sufi pray for the entire human race that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring humanity close to each other and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all with hidayah bless them all with deen al-mateen assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh